Hi there, this is Brandon pulling out with the Center for Excellence in Teaching at LCCC. Again, we're going to um, take a look at what a course looks like and, and all the little details that go into uh, exporting a course from D2L and moving it into Canvas. So um, first I wanna, I wanna keep this video relatively short. Um, but I do want to go over the fact that I have a lot of different things in here uh, and they are set up in a lot of different ways. So uh, first we'll go into content and we'll look here. Uh, you can see just in my table of contents area I've got um, a, a link, a PDF document, a Word document with uh, a, both a due date and a start date, PowerPoint, text files, an Excel spreadsheet, uh, a uh, release condition uh, that somebody must have uh, visited my link to Google up top before they can see my Halloween background image here. Um, I've got a wide variety of external learning tools. Those are third-party products. Uh, you can see I also have a module description here. So we're going to see where some of these things show up, how they work, if they work. Um, so I've got a, a UCU meeting up here, uh, my math lab launch tool here. We have McGraw-Hill Connect. Here, of course, is Proctorio, and then I've got uh, a link to a Google document, uh, which is actually a, a relatively new thing here. So you'll see uh, when we click Existing Activities, we've got both Google Drive and OneDrive here. Uh, if I keep scrolling down, you'll see Activities. I've got a checklist here, a quiz that requires the Respondus Lockdown Browser, a quiz with a password, uh, and a start and end date on it. Um, a quiz set up with multiple attempts and a start and end date. Uh, and then I actually have uh, an empty module with uh, a description in it as well. We're going to go ahead and scroll back up to the top. We'll go ahead and look at some of the activities real quick. Um, I've got one uh, assignment folder uh, that just has uh, grading in it, which is this one down here. Uh, the top one here you can see has turn it in enabled. Um, if I move on to quizzes, you'll see um, I have uh, a few different quizzes that we already went over, but I also have kind of a massive question library here. So um, we're going to take a look at that as well. Um, now, if we go to attendance up next, you can see I've got an attendance register. Uh, I also made a uh, uh, custom scheme uh, for attendance here. If we go into the gradebook, uh, you'll see that I have lots of different things set up in here. So I've got some of these that are linked, some that aren't. Um, I have a couple, like my homework category. Every item is worth 15 points uh, for my exams. That's different. Uh, I've got some bell ringers in here, uh, and then I have a discussion as well. Um, even deeper, if we go into the course admin, we can look at intelligent agents. Uh, I do have an enabled intelligent agent in here. Uh, you will note that this is not a tool that is present within uh, Canvas. So I just wanted to build out this course so that we could look at what comes over, what doesn't, what does it look like when we get there. So uh, if you haven't heard already, I will tell you that exporting your course and importing it into Canvas is not the number one recommendation. Um, you'll see why in just a couple minutes here. Uh, but there are easy ways to do that. So this video is just going over the issues that you may experience uh, when you're exporting your course. So uh, if you go to Course Admin and you do Import, Export, Copy Components, uh, there is on this next page, the second to last option is Export Components. I'll go ahead and click Start. You can see we've got a list here. So calendar, checklist, content, external learning tools, uh, discussions, assignments, um, announcements, my question library. I've got all this stuff. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select everything and I'm going to click continue. Uh, it's going to say, do you want to export everything? We can say yes. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and do continue again. All right, so now we can see export is finished, uh, content has finished, everything looks like it was successful. Um, that only took probably about two and a half minutes, so not too long. We'll go ahead and click finish. 
A couple different ways you can do this. If you just click on this link, it's going to um, open up for you. You can also right click and save link as. Uh, we'll just go ahead and click it so we can see what that looks like. Um, we're going to go ahead and go on to uh, my desktop. I've got a folder for that. Uh, now, if you're backing these up, I would put in a better name for this. I wouldn't leave it as um, what this is because it's D12 export. It has the uh, org unit identification number, um, and then it has a date and time after it. Um, I would name it something useful. Um, you know, for example, if you're doing an English course or, or an astronomy course or something like that, um, put in your your uh, at least your discipline course number, uh, maybe even a section number if you want to identify it, um, as well as a date that'll give you uh, ample information to uh, retrieve that. For right now, I'm just going to leave that. Um, you'll see that it was about about 50 megs. So. Um, we're done here in D2L. Um, I've already got Canvas open in another tab, so we're going to go ahead and swap over there. Um, I'm just in my sandbox. You can see up top, you can always import your stuff into your sandbox. Uh, on the left-hand side here, we're going to look at navigation, and we're going to go to Settings. And we're going to do Import Course Content here on the right. We have to choose a content type. Uh, you'll see that there is a D12 export zip format. We're going to go ahead and do that. Um, it's going to ask us where we want to look. Remember, I put that on my desktop. Make sure you remember where your files are. We'll open that up. It says, hey, there it is. Uh, if we do have questions in there, where do we want to put them? Um, we can say we want to create a new question bank. I'm going to say imported from D12, just so I have an idea of where that is. Content, do we want to select specific things or all? I'm going to say everything. Um, and then you can do adjust events and due dates if you want to when you're pulling stuff in. Um, we're just going to leave everything for right now so that we can see how it comes over. Next, we're going to hit import. We're going to get a little bit of a loading screen here. And there we go. Um, so this page is uh, where you can see the status of your job. Now, uh, a job is a particular import. So as you can see, here's mine. Here's the zip file it's importing. Um, it says it's from Desire to Learn uh, when it was started. And we can see the progress here. Now, this is not instantaneous. So again, we're going to have to sit here and wait. None of your content will be available until this job finishes. Okay, so you can see now um, from start to finish, 444 is about the time uh, that we put it in. And it's about six minutes later. And you can see that there are issues here. So if you want to see what those issues are, you can click on the issues button. Um, it'll tell you, couldn't, couldn't determine the stuff for this question. Okay, um, so we can go back into our settings. If we look at one of those, don't know what it means, uh, we can come back and look at these different issues. So, um, error exporting an assessment question, no question type use. So, um, we can look at this and we can see it looks like pretty much all of the uh, LTIs, those external learning tools, did not come in properly. Um, you can see that there were um, quite a few things missing um, from those questions. And we can see that there's missing uh, calendar event descriptions. So let's go and look at what the course actually looks like now. So I'm just going to go back home. I'm looking here. You can see it says I have uh, 36 announcements. So my announcements did come over. Let's see what they look like. Um, so you can see my green stuff is here, but my, my little picture that I, I used to have up here in the corner uh, is not there any longer. 
um, that is definitely something that um, a lot of folks will, will probably uh, run into, uh, that certain items will be gone. Um, so let's go and look in modules. Let's see what happens here. So I created this one before. So here's my regular content, all right? Um, we've got external learning tools here. And you'll see module description showed up as uh, another page within that particular module. Um, so um, not necessarily the way you want to go, um, but there it is. Uh, if we come back down and we look, uh, empty module, you can see that a file, an HTML file, was created for that description as well. So we can go into these individual things, like let's look at um, some of our files. Looks like our files came over just fine. There we go, perfect. Um, here's another uh, docx file. Uh, I'm going to take a minute for it to set up a preview here, um, but those files appear to be fine. The structure of our content appears to be fine. Let's go look at assignments. So if I go into assignments, which is where everything's going to live, uh, whether it be a quiz, a, a discussion, uh, anything like that. Um, so we can see here in homework, we've got uh, our three different assignments. Uh, we do have one that's a bonus. We've got our exams. Uh, we've got our bell ringers here as well. Um, now, those bell ringers, I don't know if you'll recall, uh, were in the grade book. We didn't actually have any assignments for them. Uh, so if I click on one of these, let's see what it comes up with. Uh, there's no content here. Uh, it's actually showing up as just a, uh, a submittable assignment, um, a file upload, text entry box, or a website URL it automatically creates an assignment for some of those things that are in your gradebook that might not be tied to something. So let's go back into uh, actually assignments here, not into an individual one. You'll notice that we could actually get straight to quizzes, straight to discussions here. Uh, so let's look at uh, discussions real quick. So we have a discussion topic uh, that doesn't have any restrictions on it. Uh, there we go. Perfect. You will notice though uh, that uh, this discussion was actually at a forum, um, and it does create a new uh, forum level here, um, a new category, if you will, for, uh, for that discussion when it came over. So that's great. Uh, we'll go back to assignments. We'll take a look, and we'll see, uh, for instance, what does assignment one look like? Do we still have Turnitin on it? And you can see that, no, Turnitin is not, not put in here. Um, You'll notice that in assignment one, and I'll go back over, here's D2L. Let's, let's compare these straight up. So here's assignment one. Oops, I need to edit the folder. Uh, you can see here were my instructions. Uh, there is a, a PDF attached to it. So if I go back over uh, to Canvas, we'll go back into assignments. Look at assignment one. You'll notice that that attachment did not come over either. Um, so there are going to be things that will have to be rebuilt in Canvas. Uh, I will be making another video that has information on best practices. Uh, we are going to be putting out information on what we're calling spring cleaning uh, and how you can make your courses prepared for uh, a move to Canvas. Uh, we'll be going a different route than the import export that we just went through um, just because it's going to be easier to um, move your stuff out of D2L to uh, your OneDrive and then from there rebuild your courses in Canvas to make sure that they meet your expectations.